Okay, we're still working in section 2.3 in our mass C30, and that's drawing those complex, more complex glass graphs by hand of trigonometric functions. And we're going to do a tan graph. Now, the big thing with the tan graph is we have to recall that when we do the period calculation, that it only we're only been looking at 0 to pi. So we don't do as many marks on our, our, our uh, graph. We do half as many marks because we're only going to deal with the pi instead of 2 pi like we do in... Uh, in a tan or sine graph, or sorry, a cos or sine graph. So what you do is you make your, just make two marks on either side of your tan graph. So this would simplify 90 degrees and then pi. Uh, 90 degrees and then pi. Okay? When you're doing your pi uh, type uh, uh, graphs, or sorry, not pi type graphs, uh, tan graphs, you're only dealing with up to pi. So we only do, uh, only a, uh, it's similar to what the book does. Now the book always does one period, so they always have five marks, and they do the positive period. And that's what we're going to do with tan. But when I like to do sine and cosine graphs, I like to do a positive and negative period, just because it's more complete. And that's what I prefer to see when we're sketching. So anyways, once we have that drawn out, we would normally uh, mention that this would be our zero. So now we have to look at the graph here. And we can see that this has shifted up to by this number here. Okay, so this is actually a two. So then let's just, we know that pi has a maximum of infinity and a minimum of negative infinity. So there's our zero line down here. So we can actually draw that in now. It's our actual zero line here. And we can put our marks in here for this and this. Now we have to calculate our period that we have here. What is this going to be and what is this going to be? So normally, and I'm just going to use the pan again, normally here we have This middle material is usually theta. So this normally, for a tangent graph, only has a period of 0 to pi. So now we replace the theta with what's in the middle there. 0. And then put 2 times x plus 1 sixth pi. Plus, uh, and then equal to pi. So divide by 2 on both sides. Okay, 0 divided by 2 is still 0. And then subtract pi over 6. Subtract pi over 6. Subtract pi over 6. And this is our period. How do you get subtracting pi over 6? Well, 1 half is 3 sixths, right? And subtract 1 sixth. Okay? So, again, here we have subtracting a sixth from what one half would be, three sixths. So this would only be two sixths or one third pi. Okay, so that gives us our two points out here. Instead of pi out here, we now have one third or pi over three, if you like. And instead here we have pi over six, negative. And what's in between there, we have to calculate. So we take negative one-sixth, and we plus one-third to it, and then we divide that by two. Okay, so negative one-sixth. Make sure that's in my field of view there. And this would be plus two-sixths divided by two. So this would end up being one-sixth positive times a half, or divided by 2 if you like. So that would be 1 twelfth pi, or pi over 12 if you like. Okay? 
Okay, so now that we have what the, the distance in here is, we can just check to see what that distance is. Well, what's the distance between one-third and one-twelfth? Well, one-third, subtract one-twelfth, equals, uh, this would be like four-twelfths. So it'd be three-twelfths. Three-twelfths is equal to one-quarter. So pi over four. Let's see if there's the same distance in here. Let's say um, pi over 12 subtract uh, negative 1 sixth pi over 6. So 1 six, one twelfth plus 1 sixth. And that is actually 3 twelfths, which is equal to 1 quarter. So then we know that there's a difference. Uh, space of one quarter pi in between. So all we have to do is subtract a quarter pi here and subtract a quarter pi here. So take uh, one sixth, negative one sixth, subtract one quarter to get this one. So if we do that, well, what's the common denominator between four and six? That's twelve, right? So this is negative two twelfths. Subtract negative three twelfths or sorry, subtract 3 twelfths just. So that would be negative 5 over 12. Okay. And then again, if we're thinking of a quarter, that's how many twelfths? Three of them, so this would be negative 8 twelfths. If we reduce that, we can divide 4 into both. It's negative two-thirds pi. So now we have our set of our, uh, sorry, not our set of, but our, our divisions for our uh, domain. So now we just draw in a regular tan graph, reminding ourselves that this is now the zero line here because we drew it in there. And we just go with a regular tan graph. Oh, we forgot to put in our asymptotes here. Where's our regular asymptotes? right on either side here. So put in your asymptotes now. Should have put, maybe should have put those in a little earlier, but that's okay. Okay, now when we're doing this, you have to use your pencil guideline to, as your starting point. So start from here and draw in your regular tan graph. Something like that. Something like that. Okay. Okay, and then the, the point over, this is the next point. So as we're going to this side, going to the right, it's going to move up like this. And then over here, that gives us a peri positive negative period, or the, the appearance of that. So now let's, we can check that uh, drawing on our calculator quickly, if we have enough time here. So turn your calculator on. Just go to your window. And you want it to be negative 2 thirds pi. So in brackets, minus 2 divided by 3, bracket pi, all the way to positive 1 third pi. So bracket 1 divided by 3, bracket pi. Okay, divisions are there. Now maximum, minimum, we'll have to change. Let's make it negative 5 and positive five. And let's ta type in our tan graph. There we have it. And graph it. And there is our, if you look, it's similar to what we have checked and correct. Okay, so you notice that it, it's crossing there, just like ours is here where, oh, we forgot to put the zero line in our graph as well, but it should be in there. And that's how you do a tan graph.